Good morning. So today we are going to be talking about um, choices. And that's something that we all have to do or to make every single day of our lives, right? You got to choose what to have for breakfast. You got to choose what you want to wear. You got to choose, um, I don't know, anything. What you want to take to school, what you want to eat for lunch, you know. Choices are things that we make every day and some choices are big and some choices are small, but it's still a choice that you make. So today we're going to be talking about a story um, that actually God made a choice and uh, we're going to be taking a look at that and see the choice that God made. Um, and I just want to show you something before we get started. I made um, what I call baking soda balls. and what it is it's just see this one right here it's just baking soda and you mix it with a little bit of water not a whole lot or it'll go smushy you actually don't want a lot of water in it at all and then you just form it into like a little snowball type thing like this one right here and uh, you let it dry for maybe four or five days and you got a baking soda ball so I have this one here you see that it's white, it's plain, it's small, it's not much to it. But I also made something a little fancier. I got this one. Oh, it's hard to see in this light, but it is purple and sparkly and it's bigger. Let me sit that down. See how much bigger it is to the white one? It's pretty. This one's very pretty. This one's just plain and small. So I got two baking soda balls that I made and they're really easy to make if you guys have, if your mom or dad have extra baking soda at home, you can make your own and in a few minutes I'm going to show you a little thing that you can do with your baking soda ball once it's nice and dried out. So right now I'm going to finish talking about God's choice. So um, at this time Saul was king and uh, God was not pleased with Saul. Saul had made some bad choices um, and did some bad things and it was time for him to be fired. You're fired, Saul. God told Samuel to go um, and select a new king. So he sent him to a man named Jesse. Now, Saul had been tall and handsome and very good looking. And so Samuel expected that the new king would be the same. So he went to Jesse's house. Um, and they did a sacrifice together to, to God and uh, Saul, or Samuel made his choice. So it says in the Bible, and I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 16. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. So Eliab must have been tall and handsome and, and strong. Um, just like Saul. So, of course, Samuel expected, wow, this has got to be the guy because he looks the part. He looks like a king. It's got to be him. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So God doesn't judge by what you look like on the outside. He knows your heart. He knows what's inside of you. He knows what you're thinking. He knows your feelings and your thoughts. And he knows all that. The Lord doesn't judge by how pretty your hair is today. Or how up to date your clothes are or anything like that. The Lord doesn't judge by that. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said... This is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shimea. But Samuel said, Neither is this one the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. So Samuel must have been like, What? Like, God, you sent me here because you said you have chosen the next king, and it would be a son of Jesse. And all these guys look great. They look the part. They're big. They're strong. They're mighty. They're handsome. But you've told me no. You haven't told me the right one. So, like, what's going on? So Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. And Samuel asked, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. 
but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. So back in biblical days, um, the youngest of the family uh, implied that you were insignificant or you were unimportant. Um, and someone actually used the word runt. So he was like the runt of the litter, like the like in a litter of puppies or kittens or whatever, the smallest one you call the runt. Uh, that's what this guy called David. He was the runt of the litter. So the weakest or the smallest members of the family were often the ones assigned to take care of sheep uh, or herds of some sort, goats and herds. Um, the shepherds were those who lacked strength or skill to do more physically demanding labor. So because he was small um, and his brothers were a lot older and bigger and stronger, they could do a lot more things than he can. So in the Bible, the younger siblings are often responsible for shepherding while olden children are given more important jobs. David isn't just the youngest, youngest brother. He's the least qualified choice in the eyes of everyone. You see, Jesse didn't even consider to bring in his son. When he was told to bring all his sons towards Samuel, bringing David in, he didn't even consider that because in their eyes, he was small. He was the runt. He was insignificant, not important enough to bring in front of Samuel because there's no way that someone that small and un unimportant would be chosen as king in their eyes. They, they were looking on the outside. Samuel's selection of David must have shocked them all. So he, Samuel said, send for him at once. We will not sit down and eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him and he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. See, the Lord said that we judge by the way things look, but that's not the right way to do it. We judge by the way things look, but he looks at our hearts. He knows what's in your heart. You may be the best person, the person that looks like they're doing the, the most good, helping out people. Um, maybe you're even on a worship team or, or help leading in your Sunday school classes or, or something. And that's great. But if you're not doing it for the right reasons, if you're doing it so you get noticed, so people look at you as, ooh, look how great you are. God knows that. If you're not doing it with a heart that wants to serve and wants to honor God instead honoring yourself, God knows that. Um, if you're on the outside, this perfect looking person with the best clothes and the best hair and maybe your family has lots of money and then um, so you're popular. But yet you go and you pick on someone that's not so popular and you won't be friends with them um, and everyone's likes you because of your outward appearance but you know what that doesn't make you a good person because god looks at the heart he doesn't care how much money your parents have and how much um popular like brand clothing that you have whether you have the best shoes and the best haircuts god doesn't care about that what he cares about is what's in your heart and how you want to serve him and how you want to use the good things you do to honor him and bring glory to him and it's not about you it's about God, and that's what God notices about your heart. And David had a heart that longed to serve God, and um, that's why he was chosen. It didn't matter that he was smallest. It didn't matter that he was seen in the eyes of his family and his father as insignificant. God chose David and uh, because David had the right heart that God was looking for. So now we're going to take our baking soda balls, and I'm going to show you something with these okay so here are our baking soda balls there's the big purple one that has sparkles and you still can't really see the sparkles I'm disappointed and then the smaller white one is in this bowl so I've got helpers with me right today and I have Kara and Mackenzie and Mackenzie doesn't want to be on camera but this is Kara say hi <laughs> and they're going to help me with our baking soda ball experiment so what they've got there is a cup of vinegar 
and they're going to start pouring them on their baking soda balls just a little bit. Just a little yep. bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Move your hand, Kara. I'm trying. You just. It's... Oh. What? Let me show you that. Okay, keep going. Little bit. Just see the sparkles right there. Now. Look at them all foam up. Is it showing the sparkles? Yeah, look at it. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, so we obviously need more vinegar and oh. stuff, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is have the girls reach in and start to break up the balls. Keep it in where I can see it. Oh, wait. There's something inside that. A rock. Let me see. A rock. A plain old gray rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, set it aside. That's okay. Kenzie? Oh, no. I just got my hand glittery. I hate glitter. Heart. Ooh, look at that. What's that? A shiny gold heart is inside that one. So that's pretty cool. Baking soda and vinegar together make a bubbly mess, and it's really awesome. Okay, wasn't that fun? I love mixing baking soda and vinegar, vinegar together because it does so many cool things. So inside the nice, pretty, sparkly, purple ball was this. A plain, old, hard, gray, ugly rock. And inside the white, small, plain and boring little baking soda ball was this. Inside the one that you wouldn't pick first because it wasn't as pretty was a heart of gold. And God knows that. Um, God doesn't look on the outside. God looks on the inside. And just because something's pretty on the outside doesn't mean it's going to have be pretty on the inside. In fact, this one had a heart that was as hard as a rock. But the one that wasn't so appealing, the runt, had a heart of gold. So try to remember that, guys. When you're meeting new people, don't judge people by the way they look. Judge them by their actions, by what they do and how they live their life and the choices that they make, whether they're a good person or not. Because just because something is pretty and stylish and popular um, doesn't mean it's a good thing. And just try to remember that as you're stuck watching social media and YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. Just because something may look good and may look appealing doesn't mean it's a good thing. So let's just pray. And then we'll finish this one up. Heavenly Father, God, I just, I pray, Lord, that you reach into the hearts of these children, Lord, and give them all hearts of gold. Lord, that they look beyond themselves, Lord, to help others and not get the glory for it, Lord. Not, not so someone will say, great job. Not so someone will say, look what she's doing or look what he's doing. But God, so that you will get the glory for it, Lord, that in the good that's being done out of your children, the glory goes to you. And I just, I pray that you will give us all a heart of gold, Lord, that we can reach out into our community and touch others for you, because it's not about us and it's not about bringing glory to ourselves and it's not about um, looking the greatest and it's not about having the best stuff, Lord. It's about you and it's about your kingdom and it's about us serving Lord, to further that kingdom. And I just pray, God, over all of the children that you keep them healthy, God. Keep their families safe. 
and uh, help us to be able to come back together very soon. Let them know you love them. Remind them, Lord, that you care. And I just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, we will see you next Sunday. Have a great week.